Yeah, I thought I'd start here with a little, uh, the bonus uh, slideshow that I sent out to everybody, which was uh, HF propagation, which was one of my favorite subjects. It's a very short slideshow. And, um, you know, people say, you know, there's so many bands. What if I want to talk to some part of the world? Uh, yeah, HF propagation is a mystery to so many people. You've got all of these bands going from 160 meters up to 10 meters on HF. And you say you want to talk to a certain part of the world or a certain part of the country at a certain time of the day and you don't know which is the best band. Well, fortunately, um, we have some, uh, some really good aids to help with that. This is just just to see, show you, you know, all of the, the RS spectrum. There's just so many frequencies available. A few of these are, are amateur frequencies, of course. Carol, are you sure that's not an eye test? No, <laughs> it's not an eye test. So which should I choose if I really want to make a sked? For example, I want to make a sked. I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be over in Florida or Virginia or Puerto Rico, perhaps. And I want to talk back here to California, such and such a day and such and such a time. Which is the best band that's going to work for me? That's going to give the highest probability of making a contact? Well, VOACAP is there to help. And uh, this VOACAP, which I pronounce it that way, stands for Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program. And uh, this is a website uh, that you can go to uh, on the internet. You just Google VOACAP and you click on the VOACAP online for ham radio. And there's the website right there. Uh, all of this, you, you're welcome to take notes now, but I sent this out to everybody already, so everybody has it in their inbox and in their email. Uh, so uh, it can really be as easy as pie. Uh, by coincidence, Pi Day is two days from now, right? March 14th. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, when you go to that uh, page, which is vocap.com slant HF, uh, what you do is you choose your TX, which is a transmit location, and uh, it's, a, it's a little drop-down menu. You just click on the arrow, and you find where your origin is. And here I pick Sacramento, which very con conveniently is there. And then the destination is uh, the RX QTH. And uh, there's another drop down menu. Here I chose Puerto Rico, which is the place I was back in uh, January. And uh, then you go on this drop down menu and you pick your mode. Um, there's several different modes here CW, sideband, AM, uh, FT8, Whisper. I picked a FT8 in that case. And then I went to this uh, drop down menu here to choose my transmitter power. And I said it was going to be 50 watts. So I selected that. Then what you do is there's this little button right here that says prop wheel. You just click on that and this is what pops up. The propagation wheel. It's that easy. Now the thing is to kind of uh, interpret what this all means. The propagation wheel displays the probability of successful contacts throughout the day. Uh, each frequency band is a concentric circle. 10 meters is on the outside. You can see it's labeled here as 10. Then it's 12 meters, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, 60, and 80 meters is the inside one. And then each UTC hour is a slice of the pie going around starting from zero hours UTC all the way around to 23 hours UTC. So we use uh, universal coordinated time, of course, because that way it no, no, doesn't care what, what locality you're in. It'll work wherever you are. So uh, this scale over here, 0 to 100, shows the um, reliability of that circuit. Uh, and uh, that probability of contact ranges from red for 100% down to white for 0%. So for a best chance of a successful contact, you choose a time and a band with the reddest colors. For example, here, if you're on 15 or 17 meters, you can go between 2100 and 2300, and there you got a nice red area right there. So you could plot a, plan a sked for those frequencies at that time, and you're going to have the highest probability of making that contact successfully. Uh, and of course, if you take your cursor on your computer and, and just pop it over any of these blocks, what you see in the center here is the uh, probability for that time and band. And that, so I have the cursor over here and it's showing me at 2200 UTC, 15 meters, it has a 99% of a good contact there. 
So this prediction model is based on many years of observations over various solar cycles of seasonal changes. So it, it changes with the season and uh, with the year because it uh, uses what's called a smooth sunspot number to come up with these uh, um, predictions. There are going to be some random variations in solar flux, solar flares, and geomagnetic storms which are going to disturb the HF propagation. So you may not get, the, this is not a 100% prediction, but this gives you a good guess for a successful contact. And if you want to schedule a contact for weeks or months in advance or any other date or even go back in the past, what you do is down here you ch click on that little calendar, you change the date, and then you just do all the steps again and it'll give you a prediction for that particular date uh, at any time. Now if you want any further information, this program is really powerful. It gives you a lot more information. Uh, you can get more information. If you click on the prop charts button, which is this one up here, um, then you get the same information as in the prop wheel, but it shows as a bunch of these curves, and each curve line stands for a uh, particular band, uh, one of ten different bands over that 24-hour period. This is a little harder to interpret than that wheel, but uh, if you want more details, you know, comparing one band to another, that's a way to do that. And uh, this is showing the circuit reliability for short path from one point to the other. And if you click on this uh, drop down menu, you can choose the long path to see uh, what's the best way there, or uh, it'll show you signal strengths, or um, uh, maximum usable frequencies, uh, and charts for all of the different bands, single bands if you want. So there's a lot of information in there. Now if you want more precise um, if you want more precise prediction, you can give a little bit more data to customize it for your particular setup. So what you do is you click on the antenna button there, and it displays the default transmit and receive antennas that are used on its predictions. And you can see the default antennas are two element Yagi's for 10 through 20 meters, and uh, on uh, 30 through 80 meters there are dipoles or ground planes. And you can have a more realistic prediction if you select an antenna and a height that is closer to what the real antennas that you're using. So it'll, it'll make adjustments for that. And the way you do that is you click on the, uh, that band, transmit, and then you have all of these different, different types of antenna heights and types of antennas you can choose from. Then you run the VOACAP program again to see the propagation wheel and the charts that are customized. Uh, and then if you want, there's another way you can use this program, and it is to see where you're going to be heard in the world if you call CQ. And that's called in, uh, for a coverage area map. So after you've done all, everything else, setting the mode, the power, and the antennas, then what you do is you click on this little button that says Settings. And on Settings, there is a selection here, a drop-down uh, menu for your band, the time, UTC, and you could do for uh, one single snapshot or for a number of different hours. So you would set that here. That's on this uh, menu that pops up here on the left side. Thing. So the next thing you do is you click this green REL map button right here, which is starting for, uh, uh, it stands for uh, reliability. And then what you do is you get this map. It's a map of the world. See, this is where I'm located right here. And uh, it's showing, as we selected here, 20 meters at 0, 100 hours UTC. Uh, this is the map showing where my signal is going to be heard, expected to be heard, at all these different spots in the world. Uh, the best reliability is going to be where it's a nice red. So I have a lot of coverage here over all of North America, uh, South Atlantic, which is hardly anything there, of course, and then uh, some um, here into Asia. You've got uh, Japan, China, and uh, the tip here of Siberia. So um, you can do that for any time and uh, any band and uh, get a different uh, map. So it'll give you an idea where you're going to be heard. And if you want to confirm that you're being heard there, of course, you can go to a web, web SDR, find a receiver somewhere in, the, in those locations and see how you're being heard. So this is pretty cool. And if you want any more features or details, uh, there's an online user's manual. And there's the, the link right there. And uh, of course, if you go to the, uh, the slideshow that I sent you on email, click on that link, it'll bring you right to that page. So you can read more about all of the uh, intricacies of uh, VOACAP and take some of the mystery out of scheduling uh, HFQSOs. I thought that would be a, that was a cute little uh, Very good. extra bonus slideshow for you all because uh, yeah, it's all part of HF. Are there any questions about this before we go to the, the meaty part? 
Yes. Is the VOA still federally funded, or do you lose the? Uh, yes, yes. The, so the voice of him. Uh, I mean, well, all yeah. This was all paid for by your tax dollars, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's uh, made freely available for everybody. So. Uh, but that could change any time. <laughs> well, you could actually download the software and run the software on your own computer rather than doing it on the web. So uh, yes. Was that was the first thing when you go back at it? Was that real time data? Like to, if you go right now, or is it all based on predictions? Uh, this is all based on uh, uh, historical data that was uh, taken over uh, many years and uh, over many sunspot numbers uh, and uh, it's a prediction model and uh, of course it's um, it's pretty reliable it's been it's been proven it's been very very reliable okay I did have a question that I sure to tell ask. me um, sorry there was a page where you were showing you could set up for the receive antenna and the transmit antenna. Yes. And I think a point that I I may have missed was about whether you don't know anything about the uh, receiving antenna. Okay. Well, if you if you're guessing about the receive antenna, you can just put a generic thing like a dipole. Okay. And that, that's what I would normally do. Okay. But but you know what your antenna is, so you can get something that's closer to what your your antenna is. You know you can get out. <laughs> yes. Those things in Canada are wired on the ground. Mine might be on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's one of the options. <laughs> antenna on ground. Okay. The log antenna.